Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I would like to completely reformulate what a surface is. Um, I won't be able to do it well completely. I just give you the first, uh, well, we just do the first steps and then uh, complete the story next time. But what I really have in mind is that the surface is too complicated. So definitely this one here, remember that's a surface that's too complicated for me and I would like to replace it by some symbols. A, a inverse, for example, by some funny symbols, and I would like to explain how that works. And this is called a combinatorial surface. So this one is a combinatorial surface. It doesn't look like it, but it is. And the point of this video is to explain that. So uh, this time it's words and friends. We'll see. Um, let's start with the sphere. So as I said, the sphere is too complicated for me. <laughs> well, certainly it's the uh, easiest closed surface, but we can make it even easier. We can make it even easier, which is really, really nice. So take the sphere, imagine that it looks a little bit like a cone and cut it open in A. And what you get is something that looks like this, um, like, a, I don't know what it is, a, a round type shape thing anyway. And after some manipulation, you can make it look like a square um, with the sides BB and CC were the original cut line here. So this was A before and this was A before. Okay, so I can make it look like a square and locally it works as follows. So here, if I have a point on my sphere with a little neighborhood, now say, let's say it sits here, then it sits here somewhere, then it sits here somewhere, and it sits here somewhere. And as long as I'm away from the cut line, this is just always the case. So locally, as I said, locally we can't distinguish um, surfaces anyway, and this is just a sphere. And everything that makes this a global statement or is the way how the surgery is encoded, so the way of going from the sphere itself to, to this picture, um, because now we want to glue, uh, we want to go in the opposite or direction. We want to glue the edges of the same name together. So B goes to B, C goes to C, or here A goes to A, right? If I have this flat surface and I identify A with A, I definitely get a sphere. And it's pretty cool idea, actually. So we can encode the sphere as a rectangle with sides identified, or as this object here, a bigon. I think that should be the proper name here, a bigon with sides identified. And the process, actually, if you think about it, because locally everything is just a disk anyway, so the process is completely determined by the words that you see at the boundary. So here, A, A inverse, I just read this way. Uh, sorry, I will just read the opposite way. So I go A with the orientation and I go A inverse against the orientation. And here I would go B, C, C inverse, B inverse. So either of those words completely determines um, that I have a sphere and not a different surface, right? Say it again, because locally everything is a disk anyway. The only thing that matters is my gluing operation. And I can simply encode that by just writing down a sequence of letters. And note that all edges are paired in this case. So A and A, A and inverse, so that's a pair, B and B inverse, C and C inverse. And this actually means that this thing has no boundary. Why is that? Well, clearly I don't care about the internal points. The internal points have a nice disk, but you would think at least that um, here in the on the boundary, at least if this would be a square and not with, so together with the gluing operation, this is just a half disk, right? So this is a boundary point. But this point reappears roughly here, and actually, because it's glued together, and actually it's a disk. So as soon as you identify or have two words, uh, have a word with two symbols reappearing, so a symbol appearing twice, it's, it looks like locally in the, in the flat picture, looks like a boundary, but it actually isn't because it appears somewhere else again. And it's actually a disk. Okay. And now let's cut open the cylinder. Uh, same procedure, takes a cylinder, cut it open. You get a picture like this. So let me uh, again play a little po point game here. Point is here, point is here, point is here. So locally, locally, I can't tell the difference. It's, it's still a rectangle, um, maybe slightly strangely drawn, um, but it's still a rectangle. So I can't really tell the difference from the sphere. Uh, but I can tell the difference by reading of the word now, again, starting here. So I have a B, A, C inverse, A inverse. And this word completely determines this process of cutting and gluing. So cutting is, is going in this direction and gluing together is going in this direction. And this is not the sphere, right? So we have B and C instead of B and B. 
Uh, and indeed, these open points, these non batch points, is really now just a half disk. It's not glued to anything. So both of them are just half disk or have half disk neighborhoods. So they're both the boundary components. And of course, this green disk here, half disk sits somewhere here. And the other one, which I shouldn't have done in green, but maybe let's say in black, the other one in black sits around here. And these are the two boundary components here. And here, and now they're just flattened out into letters that appear once, okay? Say it again, letters that appear twice. You have a half disk and you have another half disk and you glue them together. So that's an internal point actually, and there's a gluing procedure. But if you have just one and no no pairing anymore, it's just a half disk. You can just, just see it in the rectangle picture. And another point here is I kind of have reduced, so this picture reduces surfaces to words which is pretty good because the word is much simpler in some sense than the surface. And the only thing we need to remember is kind of the gluing process going from the word. So if I would have a word in general, whatever, how many symbols, I just draw the corresponding rectangle uh, along the word and I just identify the various sides. So here would be A and A and then I could draw, glue them together and so on. We'll show, see more examples in a second. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That kind of determines a surface in terms of a word. And now we might want to think a little bit what kind of words we allow. And remember that we had this book with three pages um, where this point here has a really, really strange looking neighborhood. It's a book with three pages, which is not, which is certainly not a disk nor a half disk. So this was not a surface. So we want to rule it out anyway. And as you can see, what happens here is we have three pages glued together, hence the name, the book with three pages. Uh, so what we should do is we should not identify three or more edges. If we have four edges, then it would be a book with four pages. If we have, would have five edges, would it would be a book with five pages and so on. So these are not surfaces, so we don't want that. The only thing we want is we want to have single edges and with edges now, I mean single symbols appearing in the words. I think of them as a uh, little, little rectangle, uh, sorry, little uh, polygons here. And I have an edge here and it, it could appear once, or I have some edge here and it could that would appear twice, for example. That's okay, but having an edge that appears three times or a symbol that appears three times, that's simply not okay. That's what, don't, what we don't want. Only single or paired. That's what we want, right? So uh, single disc paired, uh, sorry, single half disc boundary paired disc. And that's the whole point. And everything bigger would be a book with many pages and we don't want that. Okay, so that is the definition of a combinatorial surface. It's just that a word in the symbols A, B, C, and so on, plus an orientation, which I indicate with a plus or minus upstairs, such that every symbol appears at most twice, right? So that's a combinatorial surface. For example, here's another example. It's a Mobius strip. The Mobius strip is really easy to produce. You take a piece of paper. It's usually preferable if it's a very longish. And you take the two opposite sides, flip one of them and glue them together. And how do we see that here? Well, we see that here, that this side here pointing upwards is glued together to this one. And the other two are still uh, just boundary components of the, of the uh, Mobius strip. Okay. So single letters correspond to boundary here, B, for example. Um, the letters of the form A, and then you see an A inverse, correspond to real disk, if you want. And the letters of the form, well, the same with different, uh, so first the inverse, then the plus. But if they have the different, uh, the same sign as an exponent, they correspond to a real strip. So but, um, but it's still a disk, of course, but it's kind of glued in a different way. And that's what you have. So have boundary, single letters, disks, honest disks, if you want, are given by AA inverse and uh, Möbius strips given by AA descriptions. And then you can list all of the examples that we like. Here's the torus, for example. Let me do the torus for you. Um, so this way, B, uh, A, uh, A, and B. So everything appears twice, which means it has no boundary. And now you do exactly what I had in the previous or in, in the video. Um, with the mathematical demonstration. So you just take the two Bs, glue it together, you get a cylinder, and you take the two boundary components of the cylinder, you glue it together, and you get the torques. We had the Möbius strip, and there are kind of more fancy surfaces. So the funny Klein bottle here, for example, is this description, A, B, A, uh, the other way around, B. So you first glue a cylinder, 
right? B and B, exactly as for the torus, but then A and A go come together in a twisted way, such that you need to match the arrows. And that's where this funny uh, twists of the plan bottle comes in. Point here is again, that a surface in this sense is just a word, which is so much easier. And then you can also write down this fancy projective plane, which is just so hard to imagine as a word. It's pretty simple. So let me just do it. It's a word that's really simple actually. So A, B, C, uh, A, B, A, B. So as a word, it's basically A, B, A, B. And now you can maybe also see why this is so hard to imagine because it has two Merbius strips. Uh, you first do a Merbius strip along the B and then you do a Merbius strip along the A. Uh, that's just, uh, my brain can't do that anymore at least, but I can easily imagine A, B, A, B. Uh, which is different from this one here, which would be A, B, A inverse, B inverse, right? So it's different as you can see. And so they're probably different surfaces, but we're not quite there yet to make that statement because we're missing a relation among words. For example, all of these, so any rectangle, uh, any, any uh, higher polygon where you, every letter just appears once. So everything is boundary here, will always be just a circle because we identify nothing and it's just a strange way to write down the circle. So all of them just, is, is, sorry, a disc, of course, all of them give discs. So what we really need in order to complete this description of a combinatorial surface is we would like to have words uh, and relations as well. So what we can do right now is if I write down a word, you can produce a surface, but it could be that I write down two different words and they give the same surface and we simply can't tell right now. So here was another example. Um, on my first slide. So here we had AA, AA inverse, and gives a sphere, and we had BCC inverse, B inverse, which also gives a sphere. So we certainly need some um, relation among the words to make it precise, and that will be the content of the next video. Just for now, this I think this picture is made way easier. Just think about this funny projective plane, which I certainly can't can't really imagine. I mean, there are some ways to do it, but um, having a really geometric picture in mind is not so easy. But just writing down a word, so A B A B, yeah, I understand A B A B, and this kind of the power of the combinatorial surface. And this is why the the two dimensional case is so much simpler than everything else. Because in the end, you can reduce it to word combinatorics. And the only thing that's missing is that I should tell you what the relations are, actually. And I will in the next video. But anyway, until then, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I also hope to see you next time.